Hi cozy gamers, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mickey, my pronouns are they, them, and I'm a cozy gaming content creator here on YouTube. So for today's video, we're finally doing a part two to the video that I posted a few weeks ago, which was video games with trans and non-binary representation. As a non-binary person, this topic is very personal to me and really important to me to see more representation in media and in video games, not just for myself, but also for other minority groups as well. But you guys really liked the last video so I decided to put together a part two for you guys. I also wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who commented game recommendations on my last video because holy crap there are actually a lot of games that I didn't know had non-binary representation in them and I'm really excited to share them with you today so if you commented on my last video, it's highly possible that your recommendation made it into this video. So with all that being said, let's just go ahead and get into this list. The first game that I have for you guys is Coral Island. Now, Coral Island is a game that's still actually in early access right now, so I'm really pumped to see what they continue to do with this game. It's available for $24.99 right now, and currently it is only available on the PC, but they obviously have plans to move it to consoles as well. And if you're a lucky person that has a Steam Deck, you are actually able to play this game on Steam Deck, but since it doesn't have the console control integration with the game yet, you will be having to use those mouse pads on the Steam Deck, so keep that in mind. Coral Island is a vibrant and laid-back reimagining of farm sim games. Be who you want and experience enchanting island living at your own pace. Live off the land, nurture animals, build relationships with a diverse cast of townsfolk, and make the world around you a more vital and harmonious place. Now, as far as the actual representation in the game goes, there are actually two non-binary characters in this game, which is super exciting. There's Raj, who is a romanceable NPC who owns a coffee shop in Starlet Town called Raja's Coffee Corner. And there's also Dippa, who is a non-romanceable NPC who's a painter and their partner's name is Emma, who owns a taco truck called Emma's Taco Truck. Along with having these characters in the game, you also get to choose your gender when creating your character at the beginning of the game. Just from the little bit of research that I was doing, I didn't see that there are any trans characters in this game, but that might be something that they're planning to add later on. I know that diversity is really, really important to this team of developers, um, and I'm really excited to see what they continue to do with this game. Next up is Celeste. Now, this one I feel like was controversial for a long time. Not so controversial currently, but maybe you have strong feelings about it. I don't know. Now, Celeste is available for $19.99, and you can play it on Linux, Mac OS, PC, Xbox One, Stadia, and Nintendo Switch, so lots of options for you. Help Madeline survive her inner demons on her journey to the top of Celeste Mountain in this super tight, handcrafted platformer from the creators of multiplayer classic Towerfall. Brave hundreds of handcrafted challenges, uncover devious secrets, and piece together the mystery of the mountain. Now, as far as representation goes in this game, Madeline, who is the main protagonist of the game, has been confirmed by the developer Maddie Thorson to be a trans woman. She has an entire article written on her Medium page, which I really highly recommend you guys checking. What is that? Is that a bug? <laughs> No, it's just cat hair. She has an entire article written on her Medium page, which I highly recommend you guys checking out if you have the time. It's actually a really good read, and I feel like it also gives a really good perspective of what the developer was actually going through when they were creating this game, and kind of broke down why they never explicitly came out and said that Madeline was a trans character in the game. But I did pull a couple of lines from the article that I kind of felt like summed it up pretty well. I didn't know that Madeline was trans during the development of Celeste. I had a hunch when we made farewell. That was a gradual thing. As time went on post-launch, my personal understanding of Madeline shifted from maybe she's trans to okay, she's definitely trans. We discussed this when writing farewell and our conclusion was that we wanted to offer Madeline privacy. That yes, maybe she was trans, but that it wasn't really any of ours or the player's business. She's a woman, a human being, and that's all we need to know until she decides that she wants to tell us more. She didn't strike us as a person who would publicly identify herself as trans, certainly not before the events of the main game. I feel conflicted even now while writing this, effectively outing her because it doesn't feel entirely fair to her. Now, while the text in the game never confirmed Madeline as a trans character, there are themes throughout the game that nod 
nod to the trans struggles that Madeline faces. And at the end of Farewell, if you pay close attention, there is an Easter egg in the game with a trans and rainbow pride flag on Madeline's desk. And as well in the game, there is an old photograph of herself confirming what we as the player subtly discover throughout the game. Now, say what you want and have your own opinion about it, but personally, I don't see anything wrong with this. The developer of the game actually is a trans woman. And throughout the entire process of this game, they were also having their coming out journey. So obviously creating this game and then having lots of people in the trans community questioning them and pushing them on it um, kind of pressured them to effectively out Madeline, which to them was a very emotional experience. I mean, think about this character that you spent so much time and love creating. And you can tell in the way that Maddie talks about Madeline in this article that she really truly believes that Madeline is her own person, has her own agency, and kind of feels like conflicted about coming out and saying that Madeline is trans. I think that this game was probably really personal to her and along with that I feel like outing Madeline probably felt a lot like outing herself personally which obviously there's a lot of emotions that come with that so even though I know when all of this stuff was initially happening there was lots of people that were upset with the way that the developer handled the whole situation I think that it's kind of hard uh, for people to out a character like that without it being emotional for them. The other thing too that I think about personally is as we see more representation in media and just in general we push for more of that in video games, I think it's okay that we have trans characters that are more subtle and don't just like straight up come out and say like I'm a trans woman or I'm a trans man. Like these are things that should just become normal. It shouldn't be an anomaly because like, I don't know about you guys, but for me personally, I have tons of trans friends. Like it's like a, it's a normal thing in my life. And if you're doing your due diligence and making an effort to diversify your friend group and obviously expanding your experiences outside of your own, it's totally normal to know trans people and for them to be out in the world and not everyone is like wearing a big ol' <laughs> I'm a trans person neon sign on their head, you know? I think personally, I don't mind Madeline and Celeste being more subtly trans, but obviously everyone is entitled to their own opinion, that's just mine. Take it with a grain of salt. On to a lighter topic. <laughs> Next up, we have Dream Daddy. Now, Dream Daddy is available for $14.99, and you can play it on the Nintendo Switch, PS4, Android, iOS, PC, Linux, and Mac OS. Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator, is a game where you play as a dad and your goal is to meet and romance other hot dads. You and your daughter have just moved into the sleepy seaside town of Maple Bay, only to discover that everyone in your neighborhood is a single, dateable dad. Will you go out with teachers? Teacher dad, goth dad, bad dad, or any of the other cool dads in this game. With mini games, side quests, and a variety of paths and endings, Dream Daddy is an amazing dating sim that will make for hours of fun. Fun fact about this game, it was created by Game Grumps, which I actually didn't know until I was like in someone's stream watching them play this game and they said that and I was like, what? How did I not know this information? I used to watch Game Grumps to like, actually Game Grumps was like literally my first introduction to like watching like Let's Plays and like streams of people. Shout out to my sister April for introducing me to them, but I just remember falling asleep watching them <laughs> and then waking up because they're screaming in the video. <laughs> But as far as representation goes in this game, there's actually trans representation. Ah! When you're creating your dad Sona at the beginning of the game, you can choose to be cisgender or transgender. And you can also choose what your previous partner's gender was, which as a bisexual, I personally really appreciate. As well as Damien, one of the dads you can date in the game is also trans, so. That's pretty cool. I like it. Also, just in general, like, I will say as far as, like, dating simulators go, this is probably, like, top of my list. I mean, there's, like, some great dating simulators out there, but, like, Dream Daddy, like, there's so many different ways that you can go with the game. I feel like it's really well written. It's actually a really well done dating simulator, um, and I highly recommend it if you haven't tried it out yet. Next up, we have The Sims 4, of course. I had to include it in the list. I'm sorry. I know everyone already knows about The Sims 4, but I just, you know, I need to, I need to 
give respect to The Sims 4 because I feel like The Sims 4 has done such amazing things for representation in games. Now, Sims 4, I think this last year actually switched over to being free to play, which is super cool, um, but there are like in-game paid expansion packs that you can buy, so keep that in mind. It's definitely one of those games that you can spend a lot of money on, but it's available on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Play with life and discover the possibilities. Unleash your imagination and create a world of Sims that's wholly unique. Explore and customize every single detail from Sims to homes and much, much more. Now, as far as actual representation in the game goes, you literally create your characters like from the ground up like it's so customizable in fact it's like so customizable that it's almost overwhelming <laughs> i don't mean that in a bad way like it's a good thing it's and it's definitely like i mean the more customization for a game that's like like the sims it's 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 great it's amazing i know tons of people will do like they'll make sims of like celebrities or like their friends or like you can you can get down to like these little tiny details and make them look so much like you which is like wild but as far as the actual representation goes uh you can fully customize your pronouns like straight up obviously they have like the base pronouns he him she her and they them but you can also literally go in and straight up, like, there's a whole menu where you can go in and just fully customize exactly how you want your pronouns to be. So you can literally make your pronouns anything, which I think is really, really cool. Next up, we have Harvestella. Now, Harvestella is a little bit more expensive. I think it's the probably most expensive game in this video, I believe. Yeah, definitely by far it's the most expensive one. It's available for $59.99. And Harvestella is available on the Nintendo Switch and PC. In Harvestella, our protagonist awakens during the height of Quietus, a disaster that visits with the changing of each season and a threat to all life. Lead a life of self-sufficiency with your vibrant house as a base and cooperate with allies to overcome various threats, all as you draw ever closer to the truth behind the disasters and the world's very creation. Now, as far as actual representation goes in this game, Harvestella lets you choose your gender at the beginning between male, female, and non-binary. And this has nothing to do with what your actual like body type looks like, which is also really cool to see. And last but not least, we're gonna end this one with Undertale slash Deltarune. Now, Undertale is available for $9.99, but Deltarune is free to play. And it's available on PC, Linux, Mac OS, PS4, PS Vita, Xbox, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. Undertale is a role-playing game that uses a top-down perspective. In the game, the player controls a child and completes objectives in order to progress through the story. Players explore an underground world filled with towns and caves and are required to solve numerous puzzles on their journey. Now, this one's going to be another kind of, I guess, controversial take, but Frisk, Chara, and Chris are considered by many in the fandom to actually be non-binary characters. The biggest one that gets debated about is Frisk, who is the protagonist of the main game Undertale. But the reason people say that they are non-binary characters is because their gender is never disclosed and they all go by they them pronouns. Now, as far as my personal research has gone, I have never found anything from Toby Fox directly saying that they are non-binary characters. In fact, the only thing that he's really said on the topic is that he's left the character's ambiguous so that it's up to the interpretation of the player and it's meant to make the games more immersive and make them feel like you're actually the one that's playing through these events. But here's where my personal opinion comes in. I personally am choosing to identify them as non-binary because obviously that's what resonates with me the most. You can go ahead and identify them however you want to, but personally for me, I think because they use they them pronouns for all of these characters throughout the game, and obviously, you know, Toby Fox said it was up to our interpretation, so I'm going to interpret it that they're non-binary. <laughs> I also highly recommend that you go check out Agent Raven here on YouTube. They did a fantastic video breaking this down. I am going to go ahead and link that video down in my bio. But yeah, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe down below. I post lots of cozy gaming content here and I would love to see you back here. Now, I did want to give you guys kind of a sneak peek on some of my next video topics. The next video that I will be posting is going to be like a cozy 
cozy desk vlog. I kind of redid my entire setup as you guys might have noticed um, in the last couple of videos anyways. Um, but I did, I redid all of that so I kind of filmed like a little bit of a chill vlog of me doing all that. So that'll be next week's video and then after that <laughs> I might have made a purchase. I might have bought something. I got a Steam Deck. Look, that's you guys. There you are, right there. But I did pick up a Steam Deck. Finally, I have been saving up for this and they had a sale recently on Steam. Um, I think it was just 10% off, so it wasn't anything significant, but I did end up picking one up. So I'm gonna be doing a review video on the actual Steam Deck itself, like just the base model, um, and gonna be comparing it to the Nintendo Switch, um, as well as uh, in future videos from now on, um, if I'm talking about games that I have personally played my Myself, it's highly likely that I'm also going to give a little snippet of my review of how it plays on the Steam Deck, if it's obviously available on the Steam Deck, which a lot of games are. So, well, I shouldn't say a lot of games. Like, so there's a lot of games that are available on the Steam Deck. Like you can play literally any game that you have on Steam, you can play it on the Steam Deck. Um, but whether or not it's on consoles, um, just kind of depends on how the controls actually work because on uh, the Steam Deck, there's like these little mouse pads that essentially work like your mouse pad would on the computer. Um, so that's how you play games that aren't integrated with like console controls and stuff. But um, yeah, I hope you guys are excited for that. I'm really excited. I'm really excited to have a new toy, obviously. I've been really, really looking forward to having this uh, console for a long time. And yeah, I'm just excited to be able to use it to create some more, some more content for you guys. And seriously, thank you so, so much for being here. I hope you all have the most amazing week and I will see you on the next one. Bye.